What's the one stop you must make on your next road trip? How about joining Rhea and me as we wrap up our Paris RV safari by visiting many ghost towns in the Old West. Then, after dirt biking since they were kids, David Stedman takes his lifelong friend up Wolf Creek Pass to help translate his skills to the snow as he introduces him to timber sleds. Finally, Reedstein takes us to Echo Reservoir for one of his favorite pastimes, ice fishing. For some of the tastiest yellow perch in the state, it's all headed your way. At Your Leisure is next. Welcome to At Your Leisure, everybody. I'm Chad Booth. And today, we're wrapping up our 2019 Paris RV Safari. So, to get started, we're going to recap all the places we stopped along the way. Now, remember, the first stop was off of Rhea's bucket list when we went to Hell's Canyon to ride a jet boat up the Snake River. Love it! Woo! Gotta have that Snake River water in your face! Then, we headed down to Front Sight for some tactical training in Pahrump, Nevada, which was Brett and Dory Paris's bucket list item. The machine gun was amazing. I was very scared of it at first, but then after the first couple of pulls on the trigger, I felt like I was very comfortable behind that thing. After that, it was back north to hit my bucket list item, which was zip lining at Whitewater in Montana. Love the Yellowstone. Show us. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that was beautiful. And then we headed to one of my best kept secrets and stayed at Hebkin Lake in Montana. My oldest daughter learned to wakeboard here, behind our wood boat. I've come up here camping with the RV. It reminds me of Jenny's Lake in the Tetons, because it's kind of in the woods and you're right on the lake shore, which you can't even go to Jenny's Lake with even a car anymore. So uh, this is just a real treat to come just a few miles more and enjoy camping in the woods. And can't forget when I got tangled up behind bars when we stopped in Deer Lodge, Montana to visit their museums. I guess I'm stuck in here for a while. If you don't see me on the show forever, you'll know why. Somebody out there, please, please, bake a cake with a file in it and send it to Chad at the old Montana prison. Which brings us to where we are right now. We are in lively Garnett, Montana, doing one of the other things that you can do when you buy an RV. You can go on a ghost town safari, and that's what we're going to show you today, some of the best and liveliest ghost towns in the West. Garnet formed in 1895, but what we learned really, that the miners were actually here in the 1860s, but there really wasn't a town. They were just looking for the placer gold mm -hmm. and kind of coming up this way. But then in 1895, there were more people, obviously, and kind of the mother load was found um, at the Nancy Hanks mine up here, which is on private property. Um, and then the town just boomed. 13 saloons, close to a thousand people, and it was really busy. I mean, it's hard to imagine now because right. you only get like 200 people sometimes a day, right. sometimes 20. One thing that was unique was that it was a family town and then it actually wasn't a company owned town too. So you had a lot of families and not, you know, a lot of company owned businesses. Right. So of all the buildings in the town, yes. which one are your favorite? My favorite is probably the hotel. Because partially when I came here, I've been working here for a long time, but in 2002, I had a student go through the hotel. Because when I got here, one side of the hotel was just full of stuff. Uh -huh. So she went through all the artifacts and redid it, and it just looks like a hotel again, so yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's enormous. Yeah, it is, and that's why I like it. And just what we, you know, setting it up and showing people what it was like to live back in the day. That's what I really like. Right. You know, there's no Wi-Fi. There's nothing. You know, so people have to step back in time and rediscover what it was like. Well, I'm telling you, you guys did a beautiful job on the oh, preservation. I'm so impressed. Another question I have about it is that that this town basically died off completely around 1912, but then it kind of came back to life? It did in the 1930s. Um, 
because right before World War II was happening, I think people, there probably was a depression too, and so people needed to find a living again. And what was interesting though, in the 1930s, a lot of the families that were here were all kind of related. And so it was this big family group once again. So they said so, we're going to come up here and help each other out and yep. maybe find some gold? Yep, yep, exactly. You know, there's so much flavor in the ghost towns, and this, is, this has been an education and a half. And I want to thank Maria for giving us all that information. But we still have two more to highlight on our ghost town adventure tour. One of the great things you can do on a motorhome vacation coming across the West. And we're going to get to that. That's right. But right now, we're going to go to our travel adventure. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. We are continuing our ghost town RV safari. And we are actually in a really cool town that's normal, not paranormal. That's true. It's Virginia <laughs> City, Montana, the original territorial capital of the state. And uh, there are a lot of historical buildings. I mean, this is ghost town great. But if you look inside the doors, you'll see there's still businesses and people thrive here. It's a great way for you to come and sample living history. Check it out. Virginia City it was founded in, in 1863. Gold was discovered here. Uh, it was a boom town. Gold was discovered in Last Chance Gulch up in Helena. This was the town in the west. It's still a, a gold mining town. We still have commercial gold operations here. We are the largest intact original mining town in the United States. Charlie and Sue Bovey have a lot of credit for that, uh, for preserving the town and preserving what we have. We have, we have the fire truck. I basically do a history tour. We have the stagecoach. Uh, they do a tour up to the monument. There's a mining truck, big uh, six by six that goes up the gulch. Uh, that's a mining tour. You can ride the train from Virginia City to Nevada City. Uh, down in Nevada City, you can take and pan for gold. You can go to the, to the music hall. You can wander around Nevada City itself, ride the train back. We have two big museums here in town. Plus, basically everything on the street is all a museum. All of the original buildings all have plaques on them and they tell you all about the history of the building, when they were built and how they've evolved over time. Uh, the courthouse is also well worth going to see because of the historic nature of it. And then as far as wandering around town, on both sides of the street, both of the back streets, they have historic buildings on them and they have plaques on them also. You can spend uh, a few hours here, a few days or a few weeks and you'll still find things to do. Well, being a, being a history buff, uh, I actually grew up over in the Bitterroot. The place I grew up on is where Lewis and Clark met the Indians. This is basically the birthplace of Montana. And there is so much original stuff here. And especially for kids to come here and see it, because you can actually see it and feel it and look at it. And a lot of it is as the way it was. Kids are getting bombarded now on the internet by all kinds of stuff and a lot of it is totally untrue. It brings kids back to reality. It was a tough life. They didn't worry about what their job was or what they were gonna do this weekend. They worried about whether they were gonna live another day or not. Well, my wife lives here and she told me to either find a job or she'd find one for me and she did. That's why I'm here. <laughs> well, we got a new job protecting the gold, but you can gain gold by watching our Trailhead Adventure. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. Not only are we at the end of our trip on the uh, Great Ghost Town Tour, we're at the end of our Paris RV Safari Series for the year, and it's been so fun tagging along with you guys. Woohoo! I'm We've so had sad. A blast. Oh, I know. <laughs> Tons of fun. I wish it wasn't over. It was so great. it's been a fun week. We've we've sampled ghost towns all the way across, you know, Idaho and Montana. What was your favorite? Well, we've been to Virginia City up and in Nevada Montana, City and Nevada mm -hmm. City, which is right next door to us. Um, great place to go visit. Cute little shops. You can walk down the boardwalk right there. Yeah. Um, see the gunfights in the middle of the street. And Don't forget Boot Hill. Time. Oh yeah, oh. Boot Hill Cemetery. <laughs> Boot That's Hill. Very did you guys? We took the fire truck up. Did you guys take the fire truck up, or did you? We go drove up. You just drove up. Oh, yeah. Fun. Checked it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went with some old character in the fire truck. Well, he was, he was. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we had a great steak dinner at a uh, old Wells Fargo bank, mm -hmm. yes. which was pretty cool. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Stayed in an RV park just outside of town. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah. Enjoyed the time there. Same park Lots that we were at. So, 
Yeah, yeah that was uh, that that was probably a lot of fun. I like Bannock my, myself the best because um, Bannock is is the newest of them. Yeah. But it's also the oldest and complete. They shut down operations and the town started to die off right about the time somebody wanted to start preserving it. So yeah. uh, it, it's pretty cool that it's way. It's beautiful. And Garnet was my favorite. Uh, it was just in Montana, just fabulous. Um, it's a place where you really feel like you're going onto a movie set, but it's not a movie set. It's like the real deal. They have preserved all these hotels and the little bars and the little homes streams running through it it's gorgeous so as we've been running around you, you weren't there to hear this but as we've been running around in every one of those towns Rhea said oh I could live here I could live here I did but I, I'm not sure you really could well I mean I could live there 200 years ago, years ago. <laughs> would, have, would have been a good time 200 years ago it was a blast though it was great anyways the end of our series but we do still have work to do every week you know we have a job here and that is to check out our contest winner for this week and others. Our contest winner this week was submitted to us on Facebook and is Stephen Patterson, UTV license plate number CO4MR. Congratulations, Stephen. You just won a clearly tough windshield for your rig. Clearly the toughest windshield on the market. Now, it's time to take a look at our calendar of events. And next weekend, we'll be at the RV show with Paris RV. And then March 1st and 2nd, it's off to the Off-Road Expo, same place. And you're going to want to come to those shows because you'll have a chance to get one of our new Eagles Landing AYL Limited Edition stickers. And if you have those on your car and we spot you, you'll have an opportunity to earn extra swag and up to $100 of gas from Eagles Landing if you're chosen as our weekly sticker winner. It's a great opportunity for extra prizes for our fans, so be sure to come by and pick one up. Looks like next week's show is going to be a great show. I know. It, it won't be as much. It won't be as much fun because it's not the Paris RV series. But you know, we'll, next we'll have year. a lot of it. Yeah, we'll, we'll get together again real soon. For you sure. Know, and, uh, but our time is up for today. And don't forget, there's adventure around every corner. Exactly. But you just have to create your own. At yes, your, at your leisure. leisure.